Between May the 22nd and 25th, voters in 28 European countries will elect a new 751 member European Parliament. This is the legislature of the European Union. To its supporters, a noble experiment in multinational democracy. To its critics, an absurd, expensive talking shop. The stakes are arguably higher than at any time since direct elections to the Parliament started in 1979. The EU is only now emerging from the worst financial crisis and economic recession in its 56 years. The emergency threatened at one point to break up the Eurozone. It's also boosted populist, anti-EU and anti-immigrant parties that, before the crisis, were already making their mark on European politics. Movements such as the UK Independence Party, led by Nigel Farage, France's National Front, headed by Marine Le Pen, the Freedom Party of the Netherlands and Golden Dawn in Greece. Europe's future is filled with uncertainty. Latest opinion polls suggest the winners of the election, across the EU as a whole, won't be the populists, but the traditionally pro-EU, centre-right or centre-left, the European People's Party and the Socialists and Democrats, whose most familiar faces are national leaders, such as Germany's Angela Merkel and France's François Hollande. The Greens, Liberal Democrats and left-wing parties remain minority players. These centrist politicians hope the modest economic recovery now underway and the fading sense of acute crisis will brighten the dark public mood. But with living standards stagnant, the welfare state cut back and 26 million people out of work across the EU, many voters will take some persuading that the skies are clearing. Meanwhile, for countries in Central and Eastern Europe, these elections seem a sideshow compared with Russia's annexation of Crimea and its pressure on eastern Ukraine. These actions remind the Baltic states, Poland and others of the Cold War era when they were satellites of Moscow denied their freedom. The European Parliament has no real influence over EU foreign policy. In fact, it cannot propose legislation on any subject. Under EU treaty law, its powers are limited to negotiating with EU governments over proposals sent to it by the European Commission. The Parliament still matters. In recent months, it has pushed through more ambitious laws on financial market reform and European banking union than governments at first wanted. Not surprisingly, though, many European citizens view the EU Parliament as less powerful than the parliaments they know best at home and tainted by recurrent expenses scandals. This helps explain why far fewer voters turn out at EU election time. To stir up interest this time, the main party groups are each putting up a candidate for the job of European Commission President. But there's no guarantee that any of these candidates will get the job, for EU governments are not obliged to do anything more than take into account the election result when they nominate the next Commission President. Should that happen, the old questions about the democratic legitimacy of EU institutions are unlikely to go away. Tony Barber, Financial Times, London.